One of the biggest news items in the press over the last week or so was of course the announcement that Formula One will be banning grid girls from the sport. If you don't know what a grid girl is, well, they're very attractive young women who stand by the drivers while the cars are on the grid before the start of the race. They also appear in other promotional material and sponsorship deals, often wearing clothes that bear the logos of these sponsors. They've long been a staple of the motor racing world, and if you've ever been to a motor racing event, you will see dozens of these attractive ladies at different promotional stands in and around the event. But now they are no more, gone forever and resigned to the dustbin of history. And some people aren't very happy about this, mainly the racing fans and the grid girls themselves, who are now out of a job. A job that they enjoyed doing and got paid pretty well for. So who are the ones that pushed for this? What group of people would actively campaign to ensure a group of women who enjoyed their job and got paid well for it lost their jobs and had to find another career. Well, that would be feminists. Yes, the same feminists who walk down the street bearing their breasts at slut walks shouting slogans like my body, my rules, my clothes are not my consent, and slut pride have effectively told another group of ladies that they shouldn't dress how they want to, they shouldn't work in promotional events wearing what they want to, and they shouldn't follow careers that aren't approved by feminists. So the message of the feminist manifesto is clear. A woman has the right to do whatever she wishes, unless what she wishes doesn't fit in with the feminist manifesto. Then she is subject to abuse, harassment, and even losing her job. It's almost like women's rights have been defined along a narrow line that serves some kind of anti-Western agenda. You see, grid girls aren't offensive or slutty. They don't carry out lewd acts. They don't bare their breasts and scream obscenities at men. They aren't sex workers or involved in pornography. They are just beautiful young ladies who are an accompaniment to masculine sports and activities where the viewership is overwhelmingly male. And that is unacceptable to feminists, as feminism is not about raising women up, it's about creating a schism between men and women. It's about attacking the traditional family, it's about making women less feminine, and also about attacking traditional Western beauty standards. Of course, the overall strategy of feminism, and indeed the removal of grid girls, is one that can be described as a transitional demand. Something used by Marxists to undermine society in an attempt to create a revolutionary environment. I spoke about transitional demands in my podcast, Statues, Heritage and Bad Role Models, which is linked in the description below. I wrote about feminism extensively in my book, The Fall of Western Man. I spoke about how feminism was an attack on the housewife, the loving mother, and ultimately was a divisive ideology that is promoted by the enemies of the West to chip away at the traditional family unit, which is of course the cornerstone of Western society. I also talked about how this feminist attack on the family is another factor that helps reduce the Western birth rate. You can download Download my book for free from www.thefallofwesternman.com. But right now, I'm going to talk about why feminism hates beauty, and why feminists despise Western beauty standards, and why feminists hate to see traditional beauty held up as an ideal. Now, it would be easy to close this podcast here with a joke about feminists being fat ugly and jealous. And let's face it, that is certainly a component of this. But let's go a little deeper and understand the fundamental reasons why feminists hate Western beauty. Fundamentally, beauty is excellence. It's a high ideal, something that is both looked up to and something people strive to achieve. It's also something that not everyone can be, and that's a fact feminists hate. Feminists hate the fact that not everyone is beautiful, that not every woman can achieve the high beauty standards necessary to be a grid girl. And this anger over beauty standards and the rejection of the idea of Western beauty as a high ideal and standard of excellence can be summed up in the ludicrous feminist slogans such as all women are beautiful and 
beauty has nothing to do with looks. It's about you as a person. Well, that's all absolute nonsense. To suggest all women are beautiful is as idiotic as suggesting all men are tall. You see, female beauty is as much defined by what is beautiful as it is defined by what is not beautiful. And bear with me on this. Beauty exists on a scale. It is not simply defined by what beauty is, but by what beauty is not. If you take an animal, say a hippopotamus, that strangely was one of the first animals I thought of when discussing feminism. Feminists. A hippopotamus is still a hippopotamus, regardless of whether it is stood next to a mouse or an elephant. But a hippopotamus looks large when stood next to a mouse, but it doesn't look that large when stood next to an elephant. You see, some things are defined simply by their own being, like the hippopotamus. It's always a hippopotamus, regardless of the context. But other things are defined on a relative scale, like large and small. And those definitions can change, depending on circumstance and positioning. For example, the hippo looked huge when stood next to the mouse but doesn't look that big when stood next to an elephant. But a hippo would look small when put alongside a blue whale. And crucially, beauty is a little like large and small. Beauty is something that exists on a scale, not just by itself. Unless, of course, you follow Plato's idea of beauty, being an absolute. But even then, beauty is an ultimate perfection, and we are all shadows of that that exist on a sliding scale. You see, Grid girls are beautiful, and they are held up for that beauty. Because not every girl looks like a grid girl. And if every girl did look like a grid girl, grid girls would simply be average, and there would be no point in paying them to stand by cars or hold them up as something outstanding or special. Because a grid girl would look no different to any other girl. In the same way that if every man could run the 100 metres in under 10 seconds, Usain Bolt wouldn't be outstanding. Standing, he would just be slightly faster than your mate Dave. Now let's go back to feminism, which at its core is another ideology that believes in the fallacy of equality. And not a reasonable equality, like equality before the law, but a ridiculous claim that everyone is equally excellent in every manner. Feminism states that all women are beautiful, that the grid girl with her long flowing hair and statuesque and slim figure is no more attractive than the 18 stone pink haired blob with a huge bull ring through her nose. However, the truth is, those two women are the opposite ends of the scale. They are defined as much by themselves as they are by each other. One represents beauty, excellence and health. The other represents obesity, poor living and ugliness. And feminists hate this. But what they hate more is that excellence and beauty are not only rewarded, but that they are deified in the West. That we look up to beauty. That we admire it. That we want to preserve and protect beauty that beauty inspires us. Feminism, just like Marxism, wants us all to be equal, equally unexceptional and subservient to the new Marxist leadership. Feminism and Marxism seek to create a world where excellence no longer exists. This is why feminists have for many years crusaded against beauty pageants and attacked the idea of Western beauty as a concept and high ideal. The feminist will shriek and scream that grid girls and beauty pageants are sexist, that they are demeaning to women, that they are abusive and cruel and they treat women like cattle. The feminist wants to tell you that men objectify women and that the women at these pageants and events are sexually objectified and treated like pieces of meat. But that's not the case at all. Men look up to and admire grid girls and beauty queens as feminine and attractive and healthy. If anything, men treat these women with more respect. They want to protect them, love them, and make them their own. And surely the protective and loving nature that the Western male has for the Western female has inspired men to produce art, literature, poetry, and music that uphold these values. What's more, the beauty of the Western female has even inspired men to go off to war to protect those beautiful women. But Feminism hates femininity and beauty as those are woman
womanly virtues, virtues that the feminist seeks to supplant, not only as part of a push for equality, but in a push for the female to become ever more masculine. But this is where the feminist narrative starts to fall apart. Because as the feminists walk down the street with their breasts bared for all to see, chanting often vulgar statements with words like slut written across their naked torsos, the feminists hiss and scream, and they attack models, contestants in beauty pageants, and grid girls. But the same feminists always seem suspiciously quiet on the issue of pornography and sex workers. In fact, feminism never seems to have a problem with those industries. But why is this the case, you ask? The feminists should surely be up in arms over pornography and marching on those who produce it. Pornography is sexually degrading and actually does objectify women. Pornography does present women as mere pieces of meat, not to be looked up to and admired, but simply to be there to satisfy male sexual desires. In fact, women in pornography are often abused, demeaned, and humiliated. However, the feminists are tellingly silent. The same feminists who attack and picket beauty pageants are nowhere to be seen when it comes to opposing pornography. Beauty pageants are, however, not sexual. Beauty pageants seek to uphold Western beauty as an ideal. They are part of the deification of the Western female. Beauty pageants hold up the natural and high ideal of a beautiful and feminine female. So whilst the feminist attacks the beauty pageant and scorns the noble practice of holding up natural beauty and worshipping true femininity, the feminist stays silent on the degrading practices and sexual violence found within the porn industry. But why is this? Well, the answer is simple. Both feminism and pornography are being used to destroy the West and attack the Western nuclear family. Those behind feminism and pornography are one and the same. Same. Both feminism and pornography attack beauty and undermine traditional morality. The feminist acts in a vulgar and debased manner while seeking to tear down beauty, whilst pornographers treat beautiful women like whores and humiliate them. And the objective of both the feminist and the pornographer is to destroy ideas and values that empower those of European descent. Ideas and values that make us strong. Feminism has never been about setting women free. Feminism is simply another attack on the West. And in this instance, it's about attacking the healthy and noble idea of Western beauty. Feminism hates beauty, as beauty is another measure of excellence. It is something that inspires us and has inspired generations of Western men to do amazing things. The deification of females and the female form is a theme that is present in Western literature, art, poetry and song. From the earliest Western writings, the notion of beauty is always present. You see, our enemies don't just want to smash excellence. They want to take away anything they can that inspires us. And when I say inspires us, I don't just mean inspires us to create great works, but I mean inspires us to fight back, to stand up and defend our people and ways of life and traditions and culture. And what could be more inspiring? What could be a better reason to fight? What could be a more noble reason to stand up and be counted than protecting the unmatched beauty of the Western female? Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, please help spread the message by liking and sharing it on social networks. If you want to hear more from me, please hit the subscribe button as new videos are posted every week. You can also read my book, The Fall of Western Man. It's available as a free ebook and in both hardback and paperback, and all the links are in the description below. Finally, if you want to join in the discussion with me, feel free to add me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. Also, you can now follow me on Gab, Minds and Bitshoot as well. Everyone's welcome.